So disassembling this is not for the faint-hearted. You can see there's a lot of gubbins. Depending on what is engaged with these buttons, then these teeth will fit into this part of the flywheel. And so the momentum that's coming from this motor via the capstan belt will cause these to turn and other things to happen. An area here, basically this is to do with raising and lowering the magnetic heads. This part here, you can see is moving this area that movement there is um, selecting which of the reels is being engaged via momentum created from the upper part of this pulley. There's going to be situations where you want to put fresh grease on it. Um, so even though it doesn't seem absolutely necessary in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once you've got all these out lying loose in the box, these cams and gears and levers, rocker arms, look kind of much of a muchness. It's like a really hard jigsaw puzzle, picking that back together if you're not organised. So I'm going to suggest group things together in little compartments in a sequential order that are colour coded to the area. That way you've got a fighting chance when you reassemble this of knowing which part goes where and in which order and is associated with which part of the mechanism. You don't have to do it exactly the same way that I'm going to do it in this video. I'm just saying get yourself organised because this is the most fiddly thing I've had to take apart or put back together on any ore track that I've worked on. Not an ideal beginner's project to be honest but we'll get through this. See there's a spring from this point here to this peg here. Just going to cut that off. I mean it doesn't matter that I've taken it off, but I'm, I'm clearly gonna have to remove this e-clip first. So what we go to my compartment one. And we can see that this is attached via a spring down in the bottom plate here, so first hole from the right. Likes of that shaft there, this hole here, this is where you'd want to clean out with isopropyl and put fresh lubricant on. So that's all going into my compartment one. Next thing to remove would be this e-clip for this cog here. I think I apply quite a lot of pressure here so it's important you do this on a cushion or something so you don't damage the mechanism. There we go. Right, now we can remove this clip here. Uh, right, so you can see how that, <laughs> it's very easy for that to ping away. I've got a bunch of spare e-clips, so even if I don't find that one, I should be okay, but do be careful not to lose these things. Okay, so because I've taken them off in order 1, 2, 3, then I know I need to replace them in order 3, 2, 1. Next section, I think what I'll do is uh, mark this section, this row is red. You can see that this lever is attached via a spring here, so if I unhook that, that's that's really stiff. Oh yeah, the, the grease just it feels completely dry. I'm trying to show you this so you know what you're looking for. Auto focus is against me, but hopefully you can see that there's just really manky rough texture. So that's why we would do something like this to find dry grease like that and replace it. Next we would remove this cork. That's not too bad. I've got a big eclip here. Yeah, that feels not too bad as well, so it's just this one that dried out, but probably as well. If one of them has dried out, then probably the other posts are only going to be like 6 months, 12 months behind before they start to seize up as well. Um, so I think it is worth doing. 